The following production is brought to you by the Talkin' Buds Leaf Show. Talkin' Buds Leaf Show, we are back. Very special episode today. Very special guest. We're going to get to him in a second. But we got to talk about Matt Murray. Yes, Matt Murray. That mustache. That goaltending performance of the century. That beautiful Peaky Blinders looking man. Yeah, the big man in net who I just love watching. When he's on his game, man, does he look like an NHL goalie compared to what I've seen in the net for this franchise over the past... I don't know, 20 years. I just can't get like, I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm going to die on this hill. This guy just didn't want to be in Ottawa. I, don't, I, I, I mean, sometimes I feel like you just go out, you get a rough start. And you never come around like that. I could totally see that happening. I think that's a good hill to fight a battle on. Yes. So little over a year now, we've been a part of the Dean Blundell network, his podcast network. It's been Honestly, it's been an amazing thing for us. It's helped us get so much more exposure, particularly with the audio version of the pod. And it's just been, they've been fantastic to us. They've supported us. And we've gone back and forth with Dean a lot about like, we got to get you on the show. I've been on his show a couple of times and we finally got him on today. So let's get to it. Enjoy our interview with the man himself, Dean Blundell. Joining us now, Ryan, is the man himself, Mr. Dean Blundell. Sir, welcome to Talking Buds. You know what? I've been called a lot of things. Sir is not one of them on a regular basis. <laughs> Just so you know. Great to be here, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first time that you've ever met or interacted with Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I've yeah, been- Ryan scares me a little bit too, because he's like the quiet guy on the podcast. Like I listen to talking buds all the time. You're like in my ear every time there's a leaf game or I need to understand something. And I watch you bully Ryan all the time. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, I just like the best. But then Ryan's like got this quiet attitude where he's like, "Yeah, I'll just kind of breathe my two cents in here." But he looks like he's the scarier of the two brothers. So I've got an enormous amount of respect for Ryan. He most definitely is. But you know, when Ryan's uh, pissed off about something or has a strong opinion, you yeah. find out about it really quick. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I just kind of let Rob guide the ship, and I just, you're right, I just add my two cents in. I got the easiest job in the world. I just show up. He does all the work. I just show up. Yeah, but but listen, the, the, the Brother podcast, there aren't too many of those where two guys get along, do a great job of content, and both rock very outstanding beards. Thank you. Like, it, you guys have kind of cornered the market on leaf information from Brothers with Beards. We've also uh, <laughs> cornered the market on Bush Light. And old Milwaukee. Yeah. And, and and you what a you, time to be alive. Yes. And you tried forever to get us that old Milwaukee sponsorship and they just wouldn't they just wouldn't bite. No, no, you know, I did too. It was funny because when you guys first came aboard, I'm like, oh my God, I love these guys. Not only do they know their stuff, but they drink willingly terrible alcohol on their show. <laughs> so like it is it was one of those things where I'm like, oh, this is like a locker room mentality because that's that's what I call company beer, like old Milwaukee. It's decent beer. But you call it's company beer. You know, you, it's the case that you get to give to company when they show up because you don't want to give them great beer that's real expensive. So the fact that you guys are drinking locker room beer on your show just proved your authenticity to me too. It's well exactly that's what we were going for was for the um the authentic sort of look and feel. So yeah. I've, as I mentioned earlier, I've been on your show a couple of times and and you've been very open on like all the time about how you're not like a super duper leaf fan. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Like, you know, did you, have you guys ever, you're, you're both obviously married kids, all that stuff, girlfriends, uh, you're both betrothed. You, you both have had a relationship. Have you ever like chased down a relationship with the opposite sex where you're like, it's going to happen this week. I know it. we're going to get together where she's going to be mine. I'm going to be hers. We're going to have a great life. And then that week goes by and you're like, okay, maybe next week. And you start going like, maybe I should not be interested after like year seven. Like, <laughs> you know, like it was, maybe I should like reassess where I am. And that's kind of how I describe my 
Leaf fandom in 2022. And, and, and by proxy, I'm an Oilers fan because I grew up out west. Uh, so when I moved out here, you had to become, I've been here 20 years, you become a Leaf fan, right? Like you're talking about them on the radio. When I was on the radio, you're like, oh, you got to talk about the Leafs. They're on this big uh, playoff run. It was back when Sundin, Darcy Tucker, Shane Corson uh, were like perennial, you know, quarterfinalists, semifinalists uh, in the NHL Stanley Cup playoff draft. And, and so it was like you got behind the excitement and you enjoyed it. But that's been 20 years for me, right? And for some people that are much older than me that are Leaf fans, it's been 60 years. So, like, it's sort of like that whole, yeah, maybe we want to take a wait and see. Like, I said this to, to a buddy of mine the other day. I'm not going to cheer for the team. I'm going to make observations about the team. But this is more of a wait and see till the second round season for okay. me. Okay. Like, it, you know what I mean? Like, how the regular season doesn't matter. However, I'm watching all the games, and I don't know about last night's game, and I'd love your thoughts on it. I was shocked at what I saw. Ryan, I'm going to go to you because uh, because Rob takes all the all the all the all the air out of the room. Right <laughs> um, but I'm going to go. But but like I was shocked by what I saw in a couple of capacities. One, forwards playing defense like I've never seen them. It's like the blue and white disease doesn't exist up front. Number two, we've got goaltending. Oh my God, we've got goaltending. 44 saves last night for Matt Murray in a shutout against the Dallas Stars, who are a really good hockey team. That was a great statement game. And something felt different. And I think I put my fingers on it today, and I'd love your thoughts. Uh, because I might jump in back into, like, the fandom stuff, where I might go, hey, I'm going to start cheering for the team. I might even wear my Sundin jersey uh, while I'm watching games at night. But there's something different about this team. It's goaltending. It's that defense-first mentality. You know, the, the the wingers and the centers and the forwards aren't filling it up like they used to, but they don't have to. They can win 2-1 games like Tampa Bay realized they had to start winning you know, three, four years ago when they went on that miraculous run. So I don't know about you, but something is different about this team that kind of gives me pause for thought to remove that. I'll wait till the second round to watch any of these games. Yeah, I think the the one thing you said that I think is the biggest difference is is what's in the net. Like if you if you looked at their what was in their net last year, I mean, compared to this year, it, to me, it's a massive difference. And I know going into the season, a lot of people were complaining about um Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov, and they were worried about the whole situation. But what's made me feel better and what really changed for me, especially watching that Dallas game, is just Matt Murray looks unbelievable. Like, he looks great. He looks amazing. And they were and they were so shorthanded last night with so many injuries. A guy goes out, Victor Mete goes out with an injury, and they're so shorthanded on the back end that it, it kind, you kind of saw like a commitment to full team effort against Dallas. Like everybody just kind of elevated their game knowing that like they're just, they're, 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 they're beaten down. And I thought you're just looking for signs of this team maturing and growing up and growing a set of set of balls, basically. Well, you've seen that a lot lately and Dean, you touched on it with like a commitment to team defense. And I actually think that some of the injuries that they've suffered on the back end have actually not necessarily been the worst thing because it's sort of forced the entire roster to commit to a more sound defensive structure. Like the goaltending, absolutely. But to me, the thing that I'm seeing that gives me the most confidence is, is what you hit on Dean, the commitment to team defense. That is the biggest difference that I've seen. Cause this is a team. I thought John Cooper said it best before the game on Saturday night. He was like in the past, this is a team that was content to beat you or wanted to beat you six, five. And now they're a team that's content to beat you two one. And that's, that's the biggest difference thus far from, from what yeah. I've seen. Yeah. And you, you know, this is necessity is the mother of invention, right? And, and you watch this team play for the past few years and you would see those lulls in effort, right? You would see them specifically team defense up front. You would see that lull. You'd see, uh, they're not giving it. They're not going in the corners. And, and, and you, you know, let's, Let's let's paint let's paint William Nylander with the lull brush like he was he was fucking mad to watch uh, oh. over the past five years. Last night, you want to know how much things have changed for this Leaf team when it comes to defensive buy in forwards. Um, you know, they're incredibly shorthanded. You got Justin. I think it was a five on three, uh, which was unbelievable. I mean, the five on three in the third period was it third or second period? It was the end of the second the period. Third. End of the second period. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. And and there was this flurry where Matt Murray had to make a billion saves yep. and Mitch Marner didn't have a stick, broke his stick, and he makes a couple of unbelievable defensive plays in front of the net. Um, and we had a William Nylander sighting on the PK. Mm -hmm. Like a like two men. And I'm like, oh, my God. 
Sheldon Keith trusts William Nylander on now. The PK. And it was like this thing that went on and was light that went on in my head. I'm like, oh, these guys are for real. It's like, it's like somehow Sheldon Keith and the Toronto Maple Leafs have convinced this core of guys that, hey, guys, there's another gear here we haven't seen for the past four or five years on the defensive side of the puck. And they've all managed to kind of switch that gear. They've all managed to do that. That was really telling to me, Rob. I don't know about you, but it was to me. A hundred percent it was. And the Ryan and I on our episode we did last weekend, uh-huh. Ryan, we were kind of making fun of ourselves about how at the beginning of the season we were all freaking out. And Ryan said, quote, I cried like a little bitch four games into the season. <laughs> After, after watching this and because you watch them now like we were all calling for yeah. sheldon keith's head two weeks into the season and we're like fire dubis now get on with it get on. and now it's like no 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 they these guys are bought in to what this guy is selling again at this point in time now they have heard the naysayers that i'm seeing all over twitter are all oh, they're they've been the november cup champions for the last like three four years so obviously like we need to see how that carries into december january but there, there does seem to be more of, of a buy-in all the way around. And that's what you're talking about. Even with William Nylander, that's why Keith trusts him because he's shown. Yeah. Put me out there during the PK. Yeah. 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 And it, was he not much, like the most, I remember talking to the former NHL who lives around the corner from me and we used to go for coffee all the time. Our kids played hockey together. doesn't matter who the guy's name is. And I remember a couple of years ago, him physically frothing at the mouth going, <laughs> I would drive William Nylander to the airport for that <laughs> yeah. effort. I would, I would take him to the, you know, and I, I watched him last night and, and it's not to say the rest of the team hasn't bought him, but it was almost like they're trying to drag him along because you're like, fuck, does this guy even have a pulse? Like, you know, like he's an unbelievable hockey player. He's incredibly talented, but he's such a great microcosm of the example that we're talking about. Everybody buying into it. I watched, I don't know if you, you watched, I'm sure you watched the game last night. Uh, Matthew's goal. Matthew's goal where, you know, he goes in short side, takes a shot on Ottinger, blocks it, uh, puck ends up in the air, comes back in the middle, and they just let him walk through and score the goal. That, that was that was, that was was started by an incredible defensive play. Yep. Right? Is there opportunities? And, 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 I mean, it was a great fucking hockey game, not indicative of the score, but the score told the story, as did a couple of little pieces when you watch the game about what this team is all about. And, again, you go back to Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov. Um you know, I was watching the, the I was watching the Ottawa Senators lose, and I was sitting there thinking to myself last night. I'm like, imagine what they're thinking right now. They're eating part of his salary. Yep. He's got a 9.32 save percentage, 44 save shutout last night, and he's been a rock and a huge difference maker. I love those storylines too. But my God, what a turnaround for Matt Murray! It's been awesome to watch. At a certain point, like I said this to Ryan the other day, I was like, yes, the guy is definitely injury prone. Like. And any time, any like last night when Matthews crashed into him, I was like, "Oh my god, here we go!" Two weeks on the on the the IL, but at a certain point, you got to kind of look at Matt Murray and be like, "This guy just didn't want to be in Ottawa." No, like he just he just got to Ottawa and he was like, "Nah, I don't want to play here." <laughs> I, I was watching his post uh, post game interview. Doesn't he just look like the most Thunder Bay, Ontario individual you've ever seen in your entire life? <laughs> yeah, he does. that that mustache. Very Sioux lookout. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. he yeah. is Northern Ontario blood. He looks like he's from like Peaky Blinders with like the the short hair and the big the big like kind of twirled out mustache. Yeah, yeah. whoa, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something. But him, yeah, he looks like a Shelby brother. He does. Yeah, he, he totally does. looks like a Shelby brother. And and to your point, yeah, I mean, he is plucked right out of Northern Ontario, which is which is incredible. But I mean, hey, listen, you, you want great stories because to be a good team, right? You got to have great players. You got to have superstars to win a Stanley Cup. But you have to have a couple of incredible stories. And this team has it through the first quarter of the season. They've got a couple of goaltenders that were reclamation projects that are playing at, at a Vesna pace. Uh, the, you know, they lost pretty much their entire defensive core. Brody and Marner haven't skipped a beat. Guys have guys have come in and just been great stories from the AHL. You you look at a guy like Holloway, and you're like, man, that is a fucking unbelievable story. Uh, and then you look at at the William Nylander story, and you look at the team defense story. These are great stories, and you need these great stories and these people coming out of nowhere to 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 believe that you have a chance. And, and maybe for the first time in like the last 10 years, I actually believe we do because of those stories. Well, too, you so. also look at the greatest name in the history of pro sports, Simeon Durargachinsev, making his 
de- debut for the team last night. Well, that's another- uh, dude, I didn't even notice him on the ice once. Well, so yeah, I, be I didn't even know he played. Yeah, yeah. I watched that whole game pretty thoroughly, and I don't, I don't remember seeing him once well, on the he, ice. Yeah, he... Um, I think Sheldon Keefe pulled the plug on him pretty quick. And they also had the other, the other rookie who made his debut last night, Timmons, Connor Timmons. And he fell down like three or four times. They had the, the viz of him falling down in the warm up, And then they had the viz of him falling down, bringing the puck out in front of his net. And then Murray had to bail him out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, this is a good thing for Dubas though. Cause these are his draft picks that are making like that. They're, they're calling up and getting a look like whether they stick or not is, is a different story, but it's, it's like it, it, for a guy who, is is sort of waiting on an extension which i I, dean i don't know what your opinion is on that like do you see a a scenario where he get like if they keep rolling like this do you think they extend him during the season or do you think it's just flat out win around or you're gone buddy yeah uh the second option robbie yeah second option um, I don't, you know, it, it's funny because, it, you know, we've got this recency bias, right? Like a month and a half ago, you point out Barry Trotz was going to be the next head coach of the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, yep. right? Remember that? Barry Trotz is going to come in. He's good. Kyle Dubas is an idiot. Now, Kyle Dubas isn't an idiot, but no one's talking about how he's not an idiot. They're just shutting up and kind of going, oh, let's wait and see what happens here. And let's watch these guys kind of fulfill whatever promise he thought they had. But yeah, to to that point, I don't see... I don't see unless he gets into the second round, maybe the third round, I, I, you know, th- th- this was it, right? Like, you know, from, from Brendan Shanahan, Maple Leaf sports entertainment, uh, even from Kyle Dubas, he said, yeah, this is it. This is the show me year. So uh, I, I don't think anything happens during the year. Uh, I really don't. I, I mean, it, it, you know, cause it can fall we're a quarter of the way through the year. I mean, you know, you, you're not going, you're going to wait and see. They've been incredibly loyal to Kyle. Kyle's been incredibly loyal to this core. And this is it. And I don't see anything happening depending on the outcome until the end of the season, no matter what. So is one round enough Like, is winning one no. round enough. No, no, you don't think so, Dean. Well, I, I mean, you guys would be better framed to answer the question, but I, I don't think it is. I mean, you know, what are we five years losing in a game seven in the first round? Yep. Five years in a row. Yeah. Yes. Um, and the apathy uh, that's out there right now with with this fan base, which still exists, um, now I, I I I don't see it. I really don't. I think to to save Kyle's job in one round might be enough. Do I think if if they win a round and then and then lose in the second round, we're just gonna go? Oh well, we run around one around. Let's just run it all back next year. No, I don't. I think it'll be okay. We won a round, Kyle. Here's an extension but we need to make some personnel shifts with respect to the core of this team. Well, I find it difficult too to like, we're speaking about all these great things that are happening with this team right now and all these great stories, but I find it difficult sometimes to live in the moment with this hockey team, because these are all great stories. But at the end of the day, like we're all just waiting for one thing and that thing's in April. So it's like, I don't like, can, can they, can they get it done? Like, this is all great. This is all nice, but it always just goes back to, can they get it done? Yeah, without yeah, question. That's the the apathy, right? That that losing creates that apathy. And I think that this fan base for six years has been that way. Here's a question I have for you guys. Let me throw a little hand grenade into the mix. Can All I right. do that with you? Sure. Okay. You guys are leaf experts, you're big fans, you're uh huge podcast in the network here, very well attended. Um, you got TJ Brody maybe coming back on Thursday. Yeah. You've got uh Morgan Riley coming back in a couple of weeks. Um, you've got Sandine and Lily, Lily Zygrin. Yep. Uh, Lily Zygrin. Um, <clears throat> basically playing top two minutes, right? Top four minutes. Uh, and they've been incredible. I don't know if you watched Sandine on that five on three last night. He was out, uh, all world, yeah. including I, scoring the third uh, game winner. And I've, I've raved point. about Lilligren for weeks since he came back. I've been raving about him. Yeah, he's been a rock star. Yeah. Um, and then you got Holloway, who's also been a mini rock star. Um, what do you do? What do you do? Because I, I think the one place that they need to go and find a superstar is on the back end. Words like uh, Eric Carlson are making an appearance. Names like, but uh, what do you do? I mean, do you address the back end like you kind of wanted to a couple of weeks ago? Do you go, man, we've got some found money here. What do you and Ryan Furnish do. So this is a really, I'm really glad that you asked this because this is something you pointed out earlier, you know, Ryan and I get along great. We we don't really disagree 
much on this podcast. We kind of come on here and we we rant and rave about the same things, but this is something we we really disagree on because um, I I've been a huge proponent of if you're going to use like whether it's Jake Muzzin's cap money or whatever to go out and get someone at the at the deadline or for the playoff run, I, I want. I'm so sick of seeing Sheldon Keefe try and force fit Alex Kerfoot into that top six left winger role. I really want them to focus on that and go out and get someone. Nick Robertson has a ton of upside, but he's really small. He's not there yet. I don't think he's the right guy. Whereas as you, and I, you've, you've been a huge, no, no, no. We need to make sure we have the best possible six defensemen we possibly can. Yeah, I think I think I think any time you can upgrade your defense, like you have to, because we just we watch the playoffs every year. Like you need a good defense core to win a Stanley Cup. It's it's no secret. But at the same time, I'm also thinking like you also just got to grab the best player available. Like there's if you need a defenseman, there's no point in going out and getting another Jordy Ben to fill a spot. So I mean, I'm kind of in the camp of if if a winger is your best opportunity to upgrade, the best player available is a winger or a center then do that. Or if it's a defenseman, do that. But obviously I would like them to upgrade their back end yep. before anything else. Yeah. So Dean, where are you at with that? Well, <clears throat> two schools of thought, like, uh, you know, Justin Hall, other than that incredible penalty he took last night where he grabbed the puck and threw oh, it down wait, the first that baseline. That was hilarious. That was <laughs> <laughs> what was he doing? <laughs> I laughed so hard. I couldn't stop laughing. I was watching it. I'm like, uh, listen, I play men's league. I wouldn't even do that. <laughs> yeah. It's just fucking. Um, but Justin Hall, I think he played nine and a half minutes. I think he played like 26 minutes last night, 25 minutes. Um, and he has been really, really good. Still don't trust him. So I would replace Justin Hall. And then it sounds like a terrible thing to say. I'd replace Justin Hall. Um, I would make a trade. Uh, I'd, I'd lose guys like Kerfoot, lose guys like Robertson. And listen, I know Alex Kerfoot scored last night. I know Nick Robertson's a great little kid. And I know his brother's an incredible hockey player uh, in Dallas. Oh, that's nice. Nice pedigree. Nice, nice, nice. We're, we're not in the business of being nice anymore. And yeah. these guys aren't core players, right? Like if you've got an opportunity, what are they, 16-5-5 five and five or something like that on the season right now? You just had a statement game against a team that was like, uh, basically the same thing, same amount of points. They were also on a heater, well-coached, good team. Um, and lights have to be going on for Kyle Dubas at this point where he's like, yeah, this is it. Like, you're, you know, we're going to have to part with something to get something and we're going to have to do something on the back end. But I think you got to pull Justin Hall out of there because if he's, if he's not on a six game heater, he's on a six game fucking eye closing adventure for Sheldon Keefe where he's like, man, you got to sit here for a few minutes. I, I can't watch you play anymore. The, the only thing I'll say about Hall and his, his bonehead play last night, notwithstanding he, he's, the, he, he seems to have gotten better once they've paired him with Giordano and is, Giordano seems to be able to, because one thing we've known about him, he, he's always played his best when he's had someone holding his hand. Like it was, it was Muzzin two years ago in the Canadian division holding his hand. And thus far with Giordano, it seems like Giordano is able to hold his hand. So if if you wanted to, you could have like if everybody's fully healthy. You could go with a uh, Riley Brody, Sandine Lilligren, um, Giordano Hall as your your top six. But ideally, I think I'm with you guys. I, if you could put someone else in there, that would be ideal. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, yeah. it's also tough too, because like, first of all, all the deals they've made to upgrade their team over the past couple seasons near the deadline have not worked. I mean, they went and got Giordano. That was nice, but there's a, there's a couple failures over there and you look at their roster right now and like Nick Robertson's the really only trade piece that you have. Like, I just don't know what they also, I don't know what they could trade to get anything to upgrade their team. And I know it's nice to have a fantasy conversation about going out and getting the player you need, but if you look at the logistics of it, like they really have nobody to trade and they don't have a lot of cap space to play with either. So I, I don't know. I don't know what no. to expect. Well, there's always the Phoenix coyotes who just love to eat cap. Yeah, right? sure. <laughs> there's always like, you know what I mean? There's always a, a trading partner like that where you can put a guy like Muzzin on LTIR, uh, you know, where you can go and pick up a guy, you can trade draft picks, you can, you know, trade money, you can take on money, you can eat money. I mean, the Leafs are the best at that in the league, right? Yeah. Uh, where Brandon Pridham has the ability to say, okay, we're going to eat $14 million for nothing because that'll give us $7 million in cap space. 
and we'll just kind of figure the rest out. I mean, if it's not illegal, it should be, but I laugh every time Brandon Pridham gets his hands on, on, a, on a document that says we need like $2 million in cap space for a game tonight. I'm like, uh, Brandon Pridham will figure it out. Yeah. Someone's going to come back down with a slip disc tonight for sure. Yes, Robita Island. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Um, or Joffrey Lupa Lane. Yes, if you will. <laughs> yes, exactly. Dean, thank you so much nice. for coming on, man. Really, really, really appreciate it. Awesome to finally be on your podcast. Yes. It's funny, when you listen to podcasts, you're like, I wonder when they're going to ask me to come on that one. I'd like <laughs> to go on that one. Because we don't get a chance to talk a lot about the sports. Every time we talk about the Leafs, or every time we talk about the Bills, you just watch the like viewer count plummet. It's like, <laughs> ah, no one wants this. So this is like my well, fix, and I appreciate you. You guys do such a great job. Well, I joked on, on uh, when I was on your show a few weeks ago that like the Leafs winning is horrible for business. Yeah, it's horrible for downloads. <laughs> it's horrible for views. It's it's horrible. <laughs> like like we, Ryan and I were joking the other day. We're like, we just got to. We were looking at our our metrics, and they're definitely a bit down. And we're like, we just got to ride out this winning streak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like you, you, Ryan said it earlier, be mindful, like just enjoy it, you yeah. know, um, in, enjoy the process, enjoy watching what you're watching, enjoy talking about the games, enjoy being in the games. Uh, I mean, you can even start to sort of believe in the Leafs after what I saw last night, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, we, we, we enjoy the teams because we, they give us something to do. It's this incredible experience of life, right? I'm a huge fan of experiencing life, not like handicapping yourself in it where you're like, I can't even watch the game because I'm too stressed out right now. So I'll just, I'm just going to sit in the, there are people that do that. Yeah, there are I people know. that are so fucking stressed out by the result of a fucking hockey game or a basketball <laughs> game. They literally, they're like, you know what? I, I can't watch. I'm going to watch in the other room. I, like seriously, <laughs> that's crazy to me. Yeah. Is it not insane? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Dean, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. We're definitely gonna have you on again. I appreciate that, guys. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll return the favor. Hope to have you on very, very soon on our show. But thank you. Love the show. Really appreciate it. And very grateful for having me on, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Once again, huge thanks to Dean for coming on the show. That was awesome. As we said at the end there, we're definitely gonna get him on again. Um, if you like what you saw and if you like what you see, hit that like and subscribe button below. Spread the word. Tell your friends. We really appreciate it. And we will see you guys this weekend. Oh, one more thing. Had some people reach out to us about the pulse. Oh, if you really? want to, yes. If you want to be on the next episode of the pulse, as I said last time, hit us up in our Instagram DMs. That's where we'll be, we'll be scheduling people. Send us a DM and we'll hook you up and we'll schedule you in and we'll get your video and we'll put you on the show. This is this is what we were hoping for. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Keep bringing those takes. Keep bringing those takes, and we will see you guys next time.